Here we have a test failing because it couldn't locate an element. You can always float over the red X of a failed test step to see a summary of the reason why. If you double click the red X, it will open up the full failure details. Here you can see it was unable to locate an element. Now sometimes locating elements can be due to timing or it may not even be on the correct page. So you'll definitely want to check those things before you go editing the element. But if you've determined that you're on the right page, one way to do that is to look at the images tab. As you can see here, we have the expected state on the right where we expected to find the sign in button. And the failed state on the left where we can clearly see it was the correct page and we had the sign in button there, but it was unable to locate the element. We also have the page DOM captured at the point of failure too. We can search through this page DOM and we can validate some different fine logic strategies against that with a resolve failure tab. Oftentimes we'll find suggestions on the resolve failure tab if a backup search was able to locate the element or a close assumption. On the resolve failure tab, we can update the element fine logic directly and fix the problem for all of the test steps and tests in the project that use this. Now in this case, I'm just gonna simply use an ID property and we'll just use the word sign. I'll change the operator to contains because I'm not quite sure if that's the correct ID or not, but we'll go ahead and click validate. As you can see, it was able to locate an element that time with my combination of tag name input and ID contains a sign. This is what it was able to return for me. We have a tab index of five, an A button input class that we can use. Here we actually have the complete sign and submit ID. Since I only had the partial ID, I can fix this completely by utilizing the full ID. This looks like a static ID that could be reliable, so I'm gonna go ahead and standardize on this, and it's also something that I could use to set my project up in order to make sure from now on the ID is used instead of the tag index. But now that I've added the full ID, I'll delete my partial ID. That gives me greater strength in that identification logic. There are other options over here too. Some of them are weaker, some of them may be stronger. It just depends on the application under test. Different types of applications, different development will provide you with other options. For instance, in Angular, might, you might see ng-data, ng-model, different attributes that you may be able to take advantage of with Test Studio. Here we were able to fix the problem with an ID. We have other options we could use as well, uh, but this will allow us to go ahead and click OK at this point and fix the broken problem here. So now that we fixed that element, we'll go ahead and re-execute the test. This time we'll choose Firefox, and we'll see if our repair has corrected the issue. And we have the test runner console up as well, so you can see what it's doing as it's doing it. Also, you can see the steps at the bottom right uh, as well. And that time it went ahead and executed flawlessly. Everything is green check marks, so we have a passing test again. So you can always right-click on the element and choose Edit Element. If you're not in a live record mode, this will give you the opportunity to spin up a live recorder, which will present you with a new browser option. This will browse and navigate to the initial navigate step of the test and then allow you to move from there. The existing test step, which allows you to choose the specific test that you want to execute the test to, and then attach the recorder and look for the element. Or a current page if you have an existing page open, as I do with IE here, I can connect up to, to this browser and actually begin recording in that. So this is how you can easily repair your elements when you have an element not found. Mm -hmm.